Good morning. morning. Welcome home to the Lord's house on this, the Lord's Day, the last full Sunday of Advent, because next week is Christmas Eve. Can anybody believe it? Because I can't. (laughs) So lots going on in our Fritzville family this week and your families as well. We give thanks for all of those who were able to attend the (coughs) Advent open house at the Parsons yesterday. We had a good time and thanks for all those who could be there to share this season with us. Uh, Also coming up in the community, if you haven't gotten a chance to see down at the Grundy Theater, uh, the Journey to Bethlehem movie, they extended it and it's staying for uh, today through Tuesday. So if you have an opportunity, you can go down and see that. It's at 7 p.m. it says. So go down to the Grundy Theater and get into the Christmas spirit a little bit. And for those of you who have been asking about pictures we finally have Fredsville calendars for a cause. So all those photos that I've been taking up here of the beautiful landscape of creation, we now have a calendar of images that uh, are available to you. We're uh, supporting the Bremwood Center this Advent season, so we have our loose offering, the silver buckets that go around it offering. And at a $20 or more level, uh, you get a free gift of uh, the <laughs> calendar of images around our Fredsville community. So. Each uh, month has a photo that I took during that month of the year, and you can see me after worship if you would like to get one of, get your hands on one of those. Or if you can't stay that long, there's a sign-up sheet out there. We only have 50, so limited supply. Friendsville calendars for a cause. Okay, are there more announcements? Good. All right, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who opens the heavens and draws near to us, Emmanuel. Amen. Amen. As we light the candles of the Advent wreath in this season, we pray. Praise to you, O God. Who holds our joy and sorrow. You bring water to parched ground and life out of death. Give us strength and patience, trusting that you are true to your promises. Transform the lives of all who suffer with your wonders near at hand. Amen. And now we enjoy the gift of music from our choir.
We continue with our opening dialogue. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Clear it of stones, remove any obstacles. Come, let us journey to the Bethlehem manger. Sing with Mary, rejoice with Elizabeth. Gracious God, send your Son into our midst. Show us your pathways of love. Grant that war may cease and divisions end. Show us your pathways of peace. Watch over all who are sick, mourning, or in special need of your care. Show us your pathways of hope. Fill our world with gladness and the coming of the Savior. Show us your pathways of joy. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We join our hearts and our voices in prayer. Lord God, stir up the wills of your faithful people and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We turn now to hear from God's holy word.
Good morning, everybody. Our first reading today is Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to, pro to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, to display his glory. They shall bind up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations, they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth get, brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in, to, in, in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Word of God, word of life. Be to God. Our second reading comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 46 through 55. And I, are we reading this responsibly? We sure are. Okay, there's bold print. Okay, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your holy, lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. You have come to aid of your servant Israel, to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Great to be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our final reading this morning comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 24. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed, and he did not deny it, but confessed. 
I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you a prophet? The prophet. He answered, no. And they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you have to say about yourself? And he said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now, they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, Why then are you baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? And John answered them, I baptize with water, and among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And are there any of my younger friends out there today who wanted to join me? Whoa, you're right there. Man, so close I didn't even see. Well, some younger friends are watching from out there, and that's okay. Okay, two people, we've got things to do, right? Okay. So last week we know that the shepherds showed up because they needed to see the Christmas program and they wanted to see what all you had to do. But shepherds can't stay in the barn forever, can they? No. So how about we grab the shepherds and their animals and take them back to the field? What do you think? Should we do that? Let's go grab them. Because if they're not in the field, how are they supposed to see the messengers who are going to come and see them? I'm going to get some shepherds. You want to grab, you're grabbing those? Okay. Reed, you can grab some animals and shepherd over there. We're going to take them back to the field. Don't forget the sheep. Thank you. All right, back to the field we go. Because if they're not in the field, the angels of glory aren't going to be able to appear to them if they're not out here in the field. All right, so we've got to get them back in the field because sheep got to eat, right? Okay. Can you reach up there? Do you want some help? Thank you. Okay, there we go. Everybody's back in action. Everybody look good? All right, now we've got some other friends we need to move along too. Do you remember who else we're waiting for? Yeah, you do? Good. Do, would you like to say their names? No. Okay. I'm going to remind you. It's Mary and Joseph. Do you remember them? I think last week you were Mary, weren't you? Yeah? Okay. Come on, little Mary. Let's go get the other Mary. We've got to move them ahead, but they're up high, so we're going to help you, okay? Because you've got that vertical problem that I have. All right. Read, grab the, that one. We're going to move them ahead just a little bit. They're, they're almost here. They're off their break time from last week. Now they're up here. We'll see where they end up next Sunday, huh? All right, back up front. Come on. Now we have some other friends we checked in with last week, too. Do you remember who they are? Who else is missing from the Christmas story? Yep, yeah, Mary and Joseph. Uh-huh. Are there some other people we're waiting for? The three kings, or as we were told last week, the three dudes, or the three wise guys, or however many wise guys or dudes there are. So last week, we know that they went to the library. So last week they're at the library. We don't know if, it might have been the Dyke Library, so we're supposed to go check out books and see if they're in the Dyke Library. Yeah, watch yourself. Okay. So they have been in the library, and they finally found what they were looking for, and they sent this photo for us, and now they found out that in the book of Micah, it talks about the Messiah being born in Bethlehem. So they're reading their Hebrew and they're looking out the window, looking at the stars. Now, did you remember the, the photo of the star they sent us last week? Yeah? Can we pull that photo back up, or is that not possible? They sent us this photo, and Mr. Jeff is going to help, but I surprised him by saying that. And if we can't pull it up, that's okay, because that's my fault. But they sent us this photo, so they are looking, and they're trying to make their way, but I think they might be a little late. They've got a long way to travel. So we'll check in with them next Sunday to see where they're at. And in the online devotions on Christmas Day and New Year's Day, you can see where, see their adventures, too. There's the photo they sent us last week. I think there's something in the sky that's leading them. Can you see that big, big star up there? Yeah. Okay. Well, how about we pray to make sure that they make it safely, and that Mary and Joseph make it safely, and we all make it safely through Christmas. What do you think? Here we pray. You ready to pray? Okay. Thank you. Oh God, we give you thanks. 
We give you thanks for the adventures of the nativity. We give you thanks for the shepherds who faithfully care for their animals. We give you thanks for Mary and Joseph who make their way, little by little, toward Bethlehem. And for the wise ones who look for the star and read and show us the way of learning and love the journeys through the night. We pray that all of our family and friends travel safely for Christmas and that we can all arrive to be together to celebrate Jesus' birth. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thanks very much, friends. All right. That's a lot so far, but we got lots more to go, right? Good. So in this season of anticipation and hope, we may wonder, why do we still read these old words? These words spoken, long, spoken into existence long ago. What are they doing for us and for this hurting world today. Why does this matter? We live in a world that reveals its brokenness and again and again each day. We live in relative comfort and safety here in our home, and that is good, and we give thanks for that gift. And yet we can turn on the news at any day or hour and watch as people and places, generations in the making are crumbling under the weight of cruelty and vengeance of war and more. Heartbreaking news. Heartbreaking news out of the Holy Land every day. The continued suffering in Ukraine. Crisis in the war-torn Sudan. Maybe we haven't even heard. We feel helpless at times. Far removed from the devastation, yet our faith pulls us, tugs at our hearts toward humanity. This is not the world as God intends it to be. So what do we do? What sense does it make to keep coming together to read these old, world, old words in the light of this world's problems? How does this help? This is a question of faith that we confront again and again in this world. Today we come to listen to the prophetic voices of God's people those voices that beg for our attention, that draw our eyes to this hurting world and the people that are in need. We pay attention to those prophetic voices because they speak God's light into the dark, revealing hope where we don't even know it can be seen. Isaiah is one of those voices. Isaiah is speaking to a people returning home after 70 years of exile in Babylon. What took generations to build was destroyed and left in rubble by war. And now this people, still reeling from their captivity, face a new problem. Now they face memories and trauma of the past in their homeland. This people captured as children are returning as old men and old women to a place that they have not long not seen. And a new generation has never known their true home. And yet Isaiah speaks the light of God's hope into their midst. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty and release, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This people needs good news. The year of the Lord's favor is the year of Jubilee described in Leviticus 25. It is the 50th year when all debts are forgiven, all people are set free to return home. Even the land is given rest in the 50th year. And Isaiah speaks this hope, this light, this gift to a people who need it most. Isaiah speaks God's hope and renewal in the midst of the rubble and the mourning. Before the rebuilding has even begun, God's hope is already planted and at work. Because that's where it's hardest to see hope, is before it has begun. Isaiah proclaims God's hope but doesn't just end with hopeful words because hope is an action plan too. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities. The devastations of many generations, yes, the reality before them is heartbreaking as it is for us. And yet the hope that they seek is in their hands. But it will take time. Isaiah uses the image they are called the oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Seeds 
of hope start growing in small ways before they grow in tall ways. It takes time. An image of an oak tree is quite appropriate. That slow and sturdy growth that happens over decades, over hundreds of years. Oak trees grow from that little acorn, right? But acorns grow down, getting that deep taproot before they grow up in ways that we can perceive. They grow deep roots. It can take up to 20 years of growth above ground before we see one single acorn. Decades of rebuilding, decades of growth. But in that lifetime, in that slow growth of hundreds of years, they can produce 10 million acorns, 10 million seeds of new life from a single tree. Imagine how much more God has planted in you and me and in this world God so loves. Oaks of righteousness, hope, seeds already planted are growing those taproots of faith for generations that grow down deep before they grow up high and spread over all the world. What God has planted is growing even when we don't notice it. It is growing here and now in this place and in those places that need it most. There's a reason that Jesus returns to these old words of Isaiah as his first public reading of scripture. When he does so in his hometown in Nazareth, he quotes Isaiah during the Roman Empire. When again people were feeling the weight of grief in the face of violence and oppression, Jesus is God's prophetic voice speaking light into the dark, revealing hope where it is hard to see. And Jesus is more than a voice. Jesus is the embodiment of God's hope, the embodiment of God's light born into a world of darkness that needs a new light. The cross is that taproot of the kingdom that grows down into the rock, splitting it open so that new life may bloom. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as the garden causes what is sown in it to grow up, spring up, So the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. Jesus is the righteousness of God springing up from the rock of death into the bloom of resurrection life. It blooms forth for all the world. The life of the kingdom is born from the earthen womb of death to resurrection life that is given for all. These old words take on new life in this hurting world. Because they are the words of God spoken through Isaiah. God's word spoken to life in Jesus. And now, because of Jesus, God's word speaks life in and through you and me for all the world. That robe of righteousness that we are wrapped in is given to us in the gift of baptism. That garment of salvation is the outer wear of God's inner love that is planted in each and every one of you. It is lived through you. Hope is an action plan at your fingertips. The prophetic words of Isaiah and John the Baptist and Mary and so many more are the challenging and hopeful words that come to life in us together as the body of Christ. The prophets make us look toward the places and the people who are hurting the most under the weight of cruelty and justice and war. The prophets hold us accountable to not just pray for the love and justice of God, but to actively live in the ways of the kingdom for which we pray. Our voices join the prophetic and hope-filled voices of God's people past and present. People who proclaim and embody the good news to the brokenhearted. God's liberty and release to those trapped in injustice. God's comfort in times of grief. We have hope because the devastations are being rebuilt into something new and beautiful. Love is made real in action. The hope we seek is in our hands. It is and it will be God's way for the world. But it will take time, maybe even generations, but it is worth it. It is the hope we want for the people of the Holy Land. It is the hope we want for the people of Ukraine and Russia. The hope we want in Sudan. The hope we want in our homes and in our life together. And as we rebuild with these seedlings of hope and life, we may be asked like John was, why are you doing these things? What's the sense of reading old words and doing these small ways of love? It is because of God's love that we do these things. Small acts of love are signs of God's great faith, hope, and life among us. It's not easy, but it's necessary to share hope in a hurting world. 
with John, we admit we are not the Messiah, not by a long shot. But we point to the light of God's hope in our midst, the good news of God's love that is already here in Jesus Christ our Lord, the light of God who shines for us all. Thanks be to God. Gathered in the promises of baptism, what do we believe? We believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made. Of one being with the Father, through 
Please be seated that we may pray for the peace and healing of the nations and the world.
peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another. be seated as we continue with the gathering of our offerings for God's mission among us. Remember the wooden offering plates are our regular offering. The metal buckets are a special offering going toward the Bremwood Center. If you want a calendar that happens after worship, please see me in the gathering space. God, our light, your mercy shines with the abundance upon the earth. Receive and bless these gifts that we bring before you. Teach us patience and hope as we care for those in need. Let our stewardship be a sign of your steadfast love and faithfulness for all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We turn now to God's holy meal. The Lord be with you.
Lord our God. It is my Lord. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Saviour Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you would make all things new, in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness, and so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Gathered around this meal of grace, we remember that in the night in which he washed the disciples' feet, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, Jesus' birth, death, and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death, Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with the courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Spirit of freedom, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Join our prayers with the prayers and praise of your prophets and martyrs of this and every age, that rejoicing in the hope of resurrection life we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son, Jesus Christ, through him, with him, in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God given for the people of God. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Thanks be to God. <clears throat>
Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace this day and always. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, for whom we wait, in this bread and cup you give a foretaste of your kingdom for all people to receive together. Nourish by this meal, send us out to proclaim your good news of liberation and release, brought to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Before we go today, we have one special announcement. All right, so I was asked to announce and share about a very special event happening after worship today. Uh, so first of all, here's the announcement from the Loger family. There will be a luncheon following worship to celebrate Jean Loger and her 50 years in music ministry. She started playing at Fredsville when she was only 16 years old and has continued to share her talents with all of us. Over the years, she has taught all ages the joy of making music on the keys and as well as through singing and all sorts of other ways. We are blessed to have her continue to share her love of music with Fredsville. Please join us for a luncheon following the service to celebrate her accomplishments. Jim, Lance, Melissa, Sawyer, Sierra, Shaden, Heidi, Jeremy, Miles, and Violet. And then as an individual, I would like to share about how excited I was to hear in mid-November that uh, Jim and her family were organizing this, uh, that they'd suggest we have this celebration um, and ask that we time it as close as possible to her birthday. So happy birthday, Jean. Two days ago. <laughs> Jean is incredibly deserving of such a celebration. Um, I am the luckiest and the most blessed musician in the world to have Jean as a friend and mentor. I am thankful beyond words for all the things that Jean has taught me about playing organ, about music, about worship, and about life. Her patience, support, caring, and persistence, even when something isn't easy, are absolutely amazing. Also, Jean is a creative idea person. It is so much fun to just brainstorm ideas and figure out all sorts of the cool things we can do here at Fredsville. And it's just one of my favorite Fredsville memories is some of the times we've spent figuring things out. Um, Jean has taught me so much about music ministry, about caring for other people, um, and in regards to worship in particular, making worship worshipful, which is something that she had told me specifically around the time I started playing. On behalf of the Fredsville congregation and as council vice president, I would like to thank you for all your worship and music roles, directing the choir, leading musicals, the collaborative Good Friday Cantata, and some of the other activities that we have done with Dyke Methodists and other congregations, organizing outreach activities such as singing at the Iowa Veterans Home and performing outside our walls, and occasionally preaching lay sermons. Over the past two years in particular, uh, Jean has prepared the projection slides for worship 
for easily over 100 worship services, which is absolutely amazing and such a blessing to all of us. So thank you for all you do to provide leadership, encouragement, and modeling of what it means to be the church, for organizing and volunteering with ministries such as funeral meals, cookies for shut-ins, parent-teacher conference meals, treats for school bus drivers. Um, a couple years ago, we did the Saturday night living activities that were a lot of fun that Jean had been involved with planning. Uh, she was very, very instrumental in our big anniversary celebration and reprinting the cookbook and all of those things that happened um, in the building renovation committee planning um, and a lot of the amazing work that has happened over in the cemetery gardens and countless other ways far beyond what I'm sure even I know. So congratulations, Merry Christmas, happy birthday, and thank you. Um, I have a little uh, pastor, he told me, now Catherine, don't you say anything before the end of the service, because he knows once in a while I have something to say. Well, in our family, we have a tradition that when something good happens, we say, hip, hip, hooray. <laughs> and I think it's very special that we have had an organist in our church for 50 years with so much dedication. Let's have three hip, hip, hoorays. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. Catherine, thank you for following instructions. <laughs> and now, <laughs> may the light of Christ illumine your path. May the love of God remain with you and sustain you in hope. May the anointing of the Holy Spirit accompany your journey in this Advent season and well beyond. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go out singing an Advent favorite. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Please rise to sing.
Go in peace. Share faith. Share hope. Share love. Thanks be to God. Thank you.